Hi, I'm Sean from Demeter Designs, and today we're going to talk about the setup of your Dosatron system. I'm here today at Athena headquarters with a system we designed and built for fertilizer product testing. Your system may look slightly different than this one, but the principles are all the same. There are a few main components of the Dosatron system, starting with the water inlet, the Dosatron injection racks, monitoring loops, and the batch tank. We'll be covering these in greater detail throughout the video. Initial setup. First things we want to go over on a new system is the initial setup of the dosing units. Start by making sure the dosing system is depressurized and your start valve is in the closed position and the drain valve on the monitoring loop is in the open position. The pressure gauge should now read zero. Bypass levers. I like to start by orienting my bypass levers in the direction of flow. On the top of the bell housing, you will find the bypass lever. This is used to enable or disable an individual dosing unit and can be helpful when a particular nutrient is not needed during your growing cycle. You will notice on the lever there is an onside and an offside. Whichever is facing upward is going to be the operating state of the doser. Flip all of the levers so the on position is facing upwards. Next, we will spin the lever clockwise so the lever is pointed in the direction of the water flow. Orienting the bypass levers in this position will give you an easy at-a-glance reference to the operating state of the doser. Do not spin the bypass levers counterclockwise as you may loosen the internal nut and disconnect the bypass lever from the bell housing. You cannot over tighten the bypass lever when spinning clockwise, so don't worry about that. Stem. New Dosatron units come standard with milliliter settings on one side of the adjustment stem and percentage settings on the other side of the stem. Stems with percentage markings and ratio markings are available from Dilution Solutions if you prefer those adjustment increments. You have the choice to orient the stem in either orientation. We're going to set up our dosers with milliliter markings. To do this, start by making sure the system is depressurized. Loosen and remove the stem collar. Slowly pull the stem in the downward position about a half an inch until the alignment notch is free. Rotate the stem 180 degrees and realign the notch. Push the stem upward until the stem is fully seated and reinstall the stem collar. Check valve. On the bottom of the stem, there are three locking rings. The top ring is the injection rate setting lock, the middle ring is the check valve locking ring, and the lowest ring is the pickup tube locking nut. On the MZ2 models, the middle ring is underneath the lower pickup tube locking ring. When installing new Dosatron units, it's a good idea to make sure that the check valve locking ring is fully tightened. Completely loosen and remove the lower pickup tube locking ring. With the middle locking ring now shown, we can verify the check valve locking ring is tight. The check valve on the MZ3000 is slightly different than the MZ2. Simply snug the middle locking ring to ensure the check valve is nice and tight. The check valve is a common replacement part in routine maintenance and is easy to replace. Removing the check valve locking ring completely will expose the check valve for inspection or replacement. Please remember, these units are made of plastic and not to over tighten any of the threaded connections. No hand tools should be needed during the setup process. Pickup tube and weighted pickup screen. Your Dosatron unit will come with a six foot section of tubing and a weighted pickup screen in the box. If a longer section of tubing is needed, you can purchase it through Dilution Solutions. The installation process of the pickup screen and tubing is slightly different between the MZ3000 and the MZ2. First, we'll start with the MZ2. Remove the locking nut on the bottom of the stem, remove the red rubber cap from the bottom of the stem and discard. Insert the tubing through the bottom of the nut and push the tubing onto the bottom of the stem. Make sure that the tubing is fully seated on the cone-shaped nipple on the bottom of the stem. Failure to fully seat the tubing could result in nutrient pickup issues. Slide the locking nut up the tubing and thread onto the stem. On the other side of the length of the tubing, install the weighted pickup screen. Simply slide the tubing over the barbed nipple and the pickup tube is now ready for use. The MC3000 has a couple extra parts, but this process is still very simple. Insert the tubing through the bottom of the nut and then slide the cone-shaped fitting onto the hose with the narrow cone-shaped side toward the end of the hose. We will want to have the hose sticking out past the end of the cone-shaped fitting by about a quarter of an inch. Now hold the cone fitting up to the bottom of the stem and tighten the locking nut. On the other side of the length of tubing, install the weighted pickup screen. Insert the tubing through the bottom of the nut and then slide the cone-shaped fitting onto the hose with the narrow cone-shaped side toward the end of the hose. Again, we will want to have the hose sticking out past the end of the cone by about a quarter of an inch. Now push the hose onto the nipple of the weighted pickup screen and tighten the locking nut. The pickup tube is now ready for use. When threading locking nuts onto the stem and weighted pickup screen, make sure to properly align the threads and not to cross-thread any of the plastic threads. Pickup tube priming. When installing new tubing or changing nutrients on the doser, we will need to prime the pickup tube. When needing to prime an entire rack, we can do this process with all dosers, which will save time and water. 
First, start by making sure that the weighted pickup screen is fully submerged in the nutrient solution. With the system depressurized, loosen the upper locking ring and adjust the ejection rate to the max setting on the stem. Doing this will make the priming process much faster. Make sure not to adjust the stem beyond the maximum injection range or the internal plunger can pull out of the stem and deform beyond repair. Put the bypass lever to the on position and open the drain valve on your monitoring loop. If your pump needs to be powered on, do this now. Set your start valve to the open position and water should start flowing through the dosers with the infamous click clack sound we all love. At this point, you will start to notice nutrient solution flowing up the tubing. Once the nutrient solution has reached the stem, you can turn the bypass lever to the off position to avoid wasting the nutrient solution. When priming an entire rack, continue this process while watching each of the pickup tubes for the nutrient solution to reach the stem and then turn the bypass levers off one by one. If the nutrient solution is not moving up the tubing, there could be a leak in the connection between the stem and the tubing or the check valve may not have a proper seal. Once all the pickup tubes have been primed, set the start valve to the off position and the water should stop flowing. You can leave the drain valve on the monitoring loop in the open position for the time being. Monitoring loop. At the end of the dosatron rack is our monitoring loop. At Demeter Designs, we design a custom monitoring loop for our customers. Yours may vary if using a monitoring loop directly from Dilution Solutions. The monitoring loop consists of four valves. At the top, we have our bypass valve, the two vertical valves, and the drain valve at the bottom. During normal operation, the bypass valve at the top of the loop will be in the closed position and the two vertical valves in the open position with the drain valve in the closed position. On the top of the loop, we also have a check valve and a pressure gauge. The pressure gauge will let you know your working pressures as well as if the system is under pressure or not before service or adjustments. The check valve should be oriented in the downward position with the barbed fitting installed on the top. There is no connection to be made to the barbed fitting. This barbed fitting is here to keep larger bits of debris from falling into the check valve and causing it to get stuck open. The purpose of this check valve is to act as a vacuum relief point and creates an anti-siphon on the dosing system to prevent over-injecting. When using the higher flow D40 dosers, this check valve is not needed as each doser has a built-in vacuum relief on the unit. When calibrating the pH and EC probes, open the bypass valve at the top of the loop, close the two vertical valves, and open the drain valve to relieve pressure from the lower section of the monitoring loop. You can now take your time calibrating the probes and the system can remain in operation without pH and EC monitoring. This is also especially helpful when needing to replace a potentially failed sensor and operation of the system needs to continue. On the outlet of the monitoring loop, we have a hammer arrestor installed on the top of the T. The purpose of having a hammer arrestor in the system is to absorb shock in the system caused by fast acting valves, such as diaphragm solenoid valves often found in irrigation systems. In this instance, we have one of these valves installed as our automated tank fill valve off of the dosing system. When the valve closes, it creates a shock in the system, sending pressures up to three times the inlet pressure back in the opposite direction. It is important to install hammer arresters in the proper orientation for best results. We want them installed in the path of flow before the shock encounters sensitive devices, such as the dosers themselves. Installing the hammer arrestor perpendicular to a pipe on a T does not stop the shock as efficiently as having it in the path of flow. We do not recommend this installation method as damage to the dosers can occur. Inlet. The inlet of the Dosatron system has a few different key components such as a pressure regulating valve or pressure adjustable boosting pump, a check valve, and a start valve. In this system, we have the option of using municipal water or RO water for testing purposes. Most likely, your system will only have one or the other. When using a municipal water source, we recommend the use of a pressure regulating valve to protect against unregulated municipal pressures. When using a pressure adjustable pump from a water holding tank, we do not need to have a pressure regulating valve installed in the system. If your system has one, we recommend either removing it or setting it to its maximum pressure setting. Dosatron D14 series units have a maximum pressure rating of 85 PSI, and the D40 series units have a maximum pressure rating of 116 PSI. With municipal water, adjust your pressure regulating valve to stay within this pressure range. If using a pressure adjustable pump to pull water from a holding tank, adjust the pressure setting on the pump to stay within this pressure range we recommend a starting pressure of 65 PSI. At the beginning of the dosing rack, we have a check valve and a start valve. The check valve prevents possible backflow of nutrients and cross-contamination in the system. The start valve is used as an easy access point to enable or disable an individual dosing rack. This valve is most often used when needing to depressurize the system for adjustment or service. Probe calibration. New pH probes need to be calibrated before installation and also every 30 days during operation. To begin this process, rinse the probes in fresh water. Place the EC probe in a 2.77 EC calibration solution and place the pH probe in a 7.0 pH calibration solution. 
Wait for the monitor to achieve a stable reading and then press and hold the PHCAL button until PHCAL appears on the screen. When the monitor returns back to the normal screen, remove the pH probe from the 7.0 solution, rinse in fresh water, and place into the 4.0 pH solution. Again, we want to wait for a stable reading. Press and hold PHCAL until PHCAL appears on the screen and wait for the screen to return back to the normal readings. Your pH probes are now calibrated. Before installing the probes into the monitoring loop, wrap them with Teflon tape five full wraps in a clockwise direction. Do not over tape the threads as this will put excess stress on the PVC fitting and could result in the cracked fitting. When performing your 30 day calibration, remove all of the previously installed Teflon tape before retaping the probes. A pick or small wire brush is a helpful tool to remove the old tape. The EC probe does not detach from the monitor. I like to pre-twist the wire four to five times in a counterclockwise direction before installing so that when we're tightening the probe into the monitoring loop, it does not leave the wire twisted up when finished. This results in a cleaner installation. The pH probe typically does not require any hand tools for installation. With the wire detached from the monitor, thread the probe into the monitoring loop by hand and once snug, reattach the cable end into the monitor. Note that the pH probe cannot be left in the monitoring loop without water in the loop. Remember the old saying, if it dries, it dies. Stock tank mixing. Stock tank mixing procedures can be found on the Athena website under the Knowledge tab. We recommend a mixing rate of two pounds of fertilizer per gallon. Setting up recipes. It is now time to set up the recipe for our batch tank. We will be referencing the Athena Dosatron injection chart to help us with our setup. When calibrating our dosers, we will be running the water through the dosing rack and straight down the drain. We want to be as efficient as possible in this process so that we do not waste too much of the nutrient solution. Note that whenever we are making adjustments to the dosers, we want the system to be depressurized or have water flowing through the dosers. If adjustments are made to the dosers under stop pressure, it creates excess compression in the system and undue stress on the threads of the unit. Today, we'll be using Athena ProLine with Balance, Bloom, Core, and Cleanse, making a 3.0 EC Bloom recipe. Start by making sure that the system is depressurized and verifying that the pressure gauge on the monitoring loop is reading zero with the drain valve in the open position. Place all of the bypass levers in the off position. The first doser that we will set will be our Bloom. Turn the bypass lever on the Bloom doser to the on position while leaving the rest of the levers in the off position. Looking at our Athena Dosatron injection chart, we can see that for a combined EC of 3.0 and a concentrate mix rate of two pounds per gallon, our Bloom individual EC should be at 1.9. Adjust the stem to the 32 milliliter marking as per the recommendation on the chart, and then turn the start valve to the on position. Water will begin flowing through the system and we will want to watch our monitor reading to make sure that the EC value is at 1.9. If it is slightly off, this is not an issue and we will make small adjustments to the stem to achieve the proper EC reading on the monitor. After making an adjustment, wait a moment for the monitor to change. This can take a few seconds. Once the readout has settled on our target EC, tighten the stem adjustment locking ring to keep our setting from changing. We can now turn the bloom bypass lever to the off position to save our concentrate from running down the drain. Move on to the core doser following these same procedures. The Athena Dosatron injection chart calls for an EC of 1.5 per core and a starting stem setting of 19.2 milliliters. Make the proper adjustments to achieve this EC and lock the stem in place once finished. Setting up the cleanse doser is an easy process. Simply set the stem to your desired application rate and lock it in place. No EC or pH verification is necessary with this doser. We will be setting our cleanse at two milliliters per gallon today. Lastly, we want to set up our balance doser. Balances uses our pH up in the recipe and to achieve our proper pH. A good starting point for balance is two milliliters per gallon. Turn on the bypass levers for core, bloom, cleanse, and balance. Wait for the EC and pH to stabilize, and then make fine adjustments to the balance stem in order to achieve your desired pH on the monitor. Once set, tighten the stem adjustment lock ring and turn the drain valve to the off position. If using municipal water, you will most likely need to use a pH down solution to achieve your desired pH instead of balance. We recommend making a stock tank solution of high strength phosphoric acid at a mix rate of 100 milliliters per gallon of water. Our recipe is now built and we can begin sending it to our batch tank. Batch tank setup. At Demeter Designs, we provide a very simple solution for automated batch tank filling. This setup consists of a hydraulic float valve, a tethered float switch, and a solenoid operated inlet valve. Your tank may be larger or smaller depending on your facility size, but the components inside are all the same. 
The hydraulic flow valve at the very top of the tank acts as a backup to the tethered float and solenoid valve combination. If either the valve or the float switch were to fail, the hydraulic float at the top of the tank will keep the tank from overflowing and flooding the facility. If you ever notice the water level towards the very top of the tank, this is a good indicator that one of these items has potentially failed and needs to be replaced immediately. When setting the height of the hydraulic float, make sure that it stops at its maximum upward travel before hitting the lid of the tank. The tethered float switch should be zip-tied to the downpipe on the inlet of the hydraulic float. There are two adjustments that can be made to the tether to change the total fill volume and the total drawdown rate before refilling. To adjust the drawdown rate of the tank, either increase the length between the float and lower zip tie to create a larger drawdown, or decrease this length to have a smaller drawdown on the tank. The height you set the lower zip tie to on the down tube will determine the maximum fill level on the tank. Do not allow the maximum fill level to come in contact with the hydraulic float under normal operating conditions. Batch Inlet Valve The inlet valve on the batch tank is a 110 volt diaphragm solenoid valve. Your electrician will need to wire an 18 gauge grounded cord to the solenoid. This valve is controlled by the tethered float switch inside of the tank. Simply plug the cord from the solenoid into the piggyback plug of the float switch and then plug it into a GFCI protected outlet. When the tank is not in use, the valve should be unplugged from the outlet to prevent overheating. It is normal for the solenoid to get warm under normal operation. However, we do not want the valve to remain hot for extended periods of time. Service. Disassembly of the Dosatron units is a very simple process and can be done without hand tools. Start by removing the pickup tube lock nut on the bottom of the stem and detaching the pickup tube from the doser. Using both hands, grab the bell housing and spin in a counterclockwise motion to remove it from the main body of the unit. If the bell housing is difficult to remove, a strap wrench may be used to assist with removal. Next, pull the piston assembly straight up and out of the body. This will fully expose the piston motor and the plunger assembly. Unthread the collar from the body and pull the stem downward to completely remove the stem from the body. You can now remove the check valve locking ring from the stem and remove the check valve. Basic seal kit should be installed every 6 to 12 months under normal use. This kit is referred to as the mini maintenance seal kit and includes the lower check valve and the plunger seal. Refer to Dilution Solutions for ordering of seal kits and maintenance videos at dilutionsolutions.com slash maintenance. Thanks for watching. Your system should now be ready for use. Feel free to contact us with any questions.